We spent the past couple of years in a crazy hot market. Louisville home sales decline as demand outpaces supply. Effective communication is at the core of any situation. If you master these two ideas, you'll have a chance of being successful at residential real estate marketing. I think you need to be looking for investment opportunities that move the needle. The market will never crash if demand exceeds supply. This is what I've been telling you all along. This is the J Pitt Show. And we're back, folks. Welcome back to the Jay Pitts Show here on Talk Radio 1080. I am your host, Jay Pitts. I am tangled in cords and trying to get <laughs> loose, but it doesn't keep me from talking on the microphone. It might look funny on the uh, on the camera. It does look funny Apparently, to me. He's it, just moving around in his it's, chair. It's under the wheel. It's under the wheel. We'll, we'll wait until Ryan starts speaking, and then I'll fix the here, issue. I'll start speaking. No, so no, you, no. You it's all good. It. It's all good. I'm not tethered. It's fine. There's enough slack I can perform. Uh, no, we're doing great today. I'm excited to be back. Hey, we both have the vest and long yeah. sleeve on under Investors. And, am I, and am Hen- I still allowed to wear this? Henley's? You are. You are. <laughs> You've not been excommunicated. We don't ask that you turn in your gear when you leave the team. That'd be funny. As long as you stay with the brokerage. <laughs> it's like high school basketball, turn your, turn your uniform back in. <laughs> no, uh, absolutely. I was going to tell you, I have a great idea for the team. You okay. know, you do the hat trick, so... Jay does a lot of awards for his agents on his team, and one of them is a hat trick selling three homes in a month, correct? Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. So I think it would be funny. That's closings. closings. Yes. Yeah. Closing three homes in a month. It'd be funny if you got everybody on the team a Jay Pitts hat or team, and you did stickers like Ohio State or something for like, like helmet different stickers? awards to put on their hat. Like they could get a helmet sticker. Hat tricks. Yeah. I like that. Be helmet funny. stickers is good. You know, uh, we did helmet stickers not this year in football. The head coach wasn't all about it this year. But the year before, our, our head coach uh, was really about helmet stickers. So we bought helmet stickers for the boys, and we made it a big deal kind of awarding them. And at the end of the year when we had to turn the helmet back in, I peeled all the stickers off and then the decals and the logos, and I got like a canvas – it's like one of the only times you'll ever find me doing like a craft project. <laughs> and I was totally afraid it was going to end up being like a Pinterest fail, but it turned out really cool. I took the two, you know, side helmet logos and I put them side by side, put his number in between because he had his number on his helmet. And then I surrounded it with all his helmet stickers, like just kind of all over the canvas. I painted it like before I did it, like the team colors. Actually, it's hanging on. Sounds a, very artsy. Hanging, you, on, hanging on my son's wall in his room. Like he literally took down a U of L baseball poster to put it up, and so I was like, "Man, yeah, I did." I bet that I felt good. Well. No, it is kind of funny me imagining imagining me doing, doing artwork crafts on a weekend. Give me a second, babe. Yeah, <laughs> hold on. Hey, I'm take care of the kids. Room. I'm in. I'm in, I'm doing the craft of the day. Uh, okay, so that's my funny. wife is very crafty. Um, I am not. Let's just say that. Yeah. Okay. Uh. All right, let's move on with the show. We usually do a consumer real estate question every show. I think we don't have enough time for it today. We are both real estate agents. Jay's a broker. We've talked on the sh- about it on the show a lot. Number one team in the state. But uh, we're not going to talk a ton of real estate in this first segment. Let's just go on to some... Sure. Hot topics right sure. now. Let's do it. Uh, college football playoffs. I did. I did fix the cord. By the way, we're good. There you go. We're all good. I talked long enough. That's good. That's good. Okay. So college football playoffs. <sighs> I. I. There's. There's a lot of talk. Here's the number one mistake they made in the very beginning doing college football playoffs. Four teams, but there's five Power Five conferences. Ex- exactly. <laughs> exactly. What did they think was going to well, happen? Well, I think. I think you know. The trend has been fewer conferences. Uh, The Power Five won't likely always be the Power Five. I think we can obviously see the writing on the wall that it's trending towards four major conferences. But the playoffs are also trending toward, you know, a 12-team playoff. So, which begins when? When? That next year? Mm, Is next year the first year? next year. Next year is the first year. I don't know why we're even doing 12. Why why are we not going straight to 16? I mean, it just seems to make more sense. To go to 16, I think it yeah. gets a bit thin at that point. Um, but it gives you the Cinderella story that the NCAA tournament in basketball always gives you if you go to 16. I wish it were there now. Uh, needless to say, um, I think this is the year where there's been the most controversy. I, hot hot take, think the BCS operated better than this. I think it was easier to get the best two teams in a national title game than it was to, than it was this year at least to get the top four in a playoff. Yeah, I think it made all the other you know New Year's Eve bowls mean more too. Mm-hmm. Uh, right now, it seems like let's say okay, Georgia didn't get in, yeah, but like their bowl right now would mean more than it does 
currently. Exactly. Now, it is them versus Florida State, so I'm sure Florida State has a lot to prove. They do. They do, and I think a lot of people expect Georgia to win that handily. I, I don't know that it's true after watching. I mean, I, I, I will learn a lot from that game as to where we stand as a program at UofL. Um, I do think we were deficient at quarterback. Uh, you know, Plummer is – you know, a sixth year senior and has all the experience in the world. And he did make a play down the stretch against Kentucky to give us a chance uh, to tie the game late. Uh, you know, also has had some pretty bad turnovers, some pretty bad missed throws, you know, that kind of thing. But we look so inept against their defense that I just, I, I would like to think that they will be able to hold the Georgia defense or the yeah. Georgia offense at bay to keep it as a game. Mm-hmm. Um, I it think was the Ju- least fun I've had watching a l- like a, a little, little any game I've been really looking forward to in a while. Yeah, it was unfortunate. I mean, you know, we we are riddled and plagued with injuries into our major to our two major playmakers, but supposedly we had been told that they were healthy coming in. I don't know how much of that is true. I'm really excited. I will say not to pivot from from playoffs, but I'm excited to see what Brom does in the portal. Uh, we got a big quarterback commit, little yeah. Texas Tech. 27 years old, 26 20, years 20, old. He's like a seventh-year <laughs> senior. He's only like a year and a half, two years younger than I am. He's like a seventh-year senior with three season-ending injuries. Now he, he – No he, doctorate. He comes off – no, he comes off the stat sheet when you look at the like height and uh, weight. He's going to be good. Yeah, I think he's going to be okay. It's I think, just funny that how they're seventh-year seniors now because of COVID. Got to stay, got to stay healthy. But, okay, back to the playoffs. Um I, I don't know how you leave Florida State out other than – and here's and, and I saw something that made a lot of sense. Last year's national title game, okay, with TCU just getting absolutely boat raced is the reason why Florida State got left out. Like if you feel like there is a better team on the sidelines that would give you a better, more competitive playoffs, you have to go there despite resume. Because last year TCU got in because of resume. Yep. And then they got they got dusted. I heard this stat on a podcast the other day, and it was since they've gone to the four team playoff, the average margin of victory in games is like nineteen points or something. Wow, that's something. <laughs> yeah, that's pretty bad. I mean, nineteen points is a lot. Mm-hmm. Uh, but yeah, all right. Something I noticed, and I've seen other people talk about this, but during the conference championship, football championships the past weekend, they always do that this Dr Pepper challenge where. Two kids go out there, I'm sure you watched it, and they compete to win a hundred thousand yeah. dollars. Very dystopian when you think about it. Let's uh, usher these kids out here and hey, the only way you don't go into life altering debt is if you can throw more footballs through <laughs> into this a little, can into a little through hole. another person. <laughs> like pretty dystopian. <laughs> I and it still doesn't pay for all your calls. No, no, but but you can always take loans, and there's a good chance they'll be forgiven yeah. later. So, don't need, don't know that I want to go down that rabbit hole any more than that. But uh, there was, uh, to say that I'm bitter because I paid off my student loans myself, um, that might, that might be accurate. There was uh, one of those competitions that got messed up. This kid actually won, and they sent it to triple overtime. So they ended up paying out both kids a hundred thousand mm. dollars. But uh, once That's again, a good look, Dr. Pepper. Good job. Yeah, great look. Just. You know, you could just pay for everybody's college. But. <laughs> you could have just you could have just drawn names uh, out of a hat and say, okay, instead of parading you out on the field, we'll yeah. just give you a hundred k. And nobody throw actually throws it. It's the it's, it's how can you get them there the fastest? Chess pass is really what oh, most absolutely. people are doing. So so funny enough, um, you know, a, an agent in our office had a client event at main event not that long ago, like a client appreciation party, and he he invited us to go. So we took the kids. And uh, one of my family's favorite things, have we talked about this on the show already? Stop me if we uh, did. Pop no, a shot. We've talked about it. I don't think it was on this. No. Yes, we did talk about it on last week's show. Okay. I told Matt Hoagland we talked about That's it. That's true. Okay. So I, I won't belabor, you know, with, with repeating, but there is another pop a shot now. This is where I was going. It is completely different. Um, I I really enjoyed it. I had a pretty good score on it as well. It's not your traditional countdown to how many points you can make based on your shots uh, with like two points or three points in that last 10 seconds. It is a humongous hoop. Mm. And the balls come out really fast. And it's about how you get progressive scoring. So if you make one, you get one. You make the second one in a row, you get two points up to five. And then once you hit five, you get five for every consecutive make. And like – 
it, but it is, it's tilted toward you and it's like triple the size of a rim. Like if you hit the rim, you ain't doing it right. Yeah. So it's about speed and you're literally like feeding this thing. That's what made me think of it. It's is the Dr. Pepper challenge. It's kind of like that, except yeah. it's round balls and mm. not a Dr. Pepper can. Yeah. Cool. So anyway, uh, fun, fun. You ought to try it. We only have you, you, you and Rowan can do this together when our, you get a little. I already bit older. got him a basketball goal. There you go. He's All only right. four months old. But <laughs> uh, with our last few seconds of this segment, I just saw on Twitter, Luke Hancock tweeted, "Home alone experience this morning. Get on the plane for a six a.m. flight out of Hartford. After takeoff, the pilot comes on and says, "Enjoy your two-hour flight to Chicago. Problem is, I'm supposed to be headed to Washington. Oh, just getting off the plane now. We'll update soon. How does this happen? So." So he booked a flight to Chicago? No, he booked, It wasn't a connection? Or he uh, got on the wrong plane? He booked a flight to Washington, and they let him on the wrong plane that went to Chicago. And he's act, he said United's acting like it's no big deal at all. But we're going to leave all the time we We'll talk about it more. We'll be back with uh, in a couple of minutes, going to a couple of ad sponsors. This is the Jay Pitt Show, Talk Radio 1080, Real News, Real Talk. We'll be back. And we're back, folks. Welcome back to the J Pitt Show here on Talk Radio 1080. All right, so headline reactions. Is that where we're going next? Uh, yeah, we can. But let's let's go back with the Luke Hancock thing real quick. Yeah, like, yeah. How does that happen? Uh, I don't know. Because they're supposed to scan your ticket, and they clearly did tell you if it's. I mean, it turns green. Boop! Like you got the little boop, and then you walk down the jetway. Like, how did he not realize? I mean, I'm I'm sure he if he's going to Washington, he probably had a connection. Yeah, I mean, um, it might have been his gate originally, and then something got changed, something got switched, and maybe I, he was running late. I can tell you this, man. Like, you know, all the airport craziness started uh, in twenty one when I was going, I was going to Houston, and I got, I hit the ground in Dallas and hadn't, you know, for a connection through Southwest, and got completely bumped, canceled everything, lines crazy i had to take uh, an uber from one dallas airport to another to catch a completely different airline to get to houston that night for my dad's surgery the next day and uh i can just tell you through the through 21 that summer it it happened a lot and so i i think what i learned was that airline software operating software and their processes are pitifully antiquated yeah and so that's that's the only thing i can tell you the one thing that is not is tsa and that is completely different. So TSA is is ahead of the curve. I digress. Cool. All right. Uh, let's go to, yeah, headline reactions. Just some headlines I saw over the week that just get our not initial reactions to them. We'll start with Starbucks. So uh, last show, we talked about how Starbucks is basically a bank and getting a free <laughs> loan from yeah. people either importing money into their app. That tweet and was crazy. And just being there. But here's another one. Starbucks attributed... Two hundred and twelve point seven million in revenue for twenty twenty two fiscal year to breakage. In other words, unused gift cards and you know, this person saying you should definitely run a buy thirty dollar gift card, get ten dollar gift card promo for the holidays. <laughs> so yeah. they had two hundred and twelve million dollars in unused uh, gift cards, Starbucks. It's crazy. Like I a fifth of a billion dollars. <laughs> I mean, like, how how is that? I how mean, is that? a two hundred a company that just does two hundred and twelve million in revenue is a is massive a massive. Company. Is Bar- a, Barstool Sports is two hundred and fifty million in revenue. Exactly, year. exactly. And Starbucks did almost that in unused gift cards and unused gift cards. So, like, you know, I'm sure that their their profit numbers are public, but um, two hundred and twelve million in unused gift cards is just like complete waste. Yeah, like what the, you know what they could do as if they even need to is they could do some crazy incentive you know they could do like when i first read the buy 30 to get 10 uh i assume you pay 30 for 10 dollars with the gift cards yeah, he's, be- he's like, being tongue in cheek uh, he's probably the jeff ruby's deal they run every year like- oh so that's okay so i did read that right then okay yeah. so i thought it was when you just said it just now it sounded to me like it was tongue in cheek yeah, like he said it weird you pay 30 and get 10 yeah. because that's actually what people spend um but like yeah, I would say like some crazy incentive, like, hey, p- look, look what you're doing. 25% off gift 24% cards. 24% off. Yeah, yeah, something like come for this month only or whatever. And and they would 
they would get a lot of like you know goodwill in their customer base but i think that's just a thing coffee is just a juggernaut oh huge and that's a really good lead into our next headline uh mcdonald's they're Mm -hmm. launching a new starbucks competitor called cosmics it's drive-through only uh, it's I guess it's throwback branding, and there's going to be minimal food offerings, so mostly iced drinks. Yeah, and they're trying to chip away at Starbucks' cold, sugary drink dominance. So is that so? This is a new franchise, but uh, it's but it's owned by McDonald's yes. as the parent company, and it's called so, Cosmics, which I'm not sure how I feel about that. Well, have you seen Seven Brew? No. Okay, so Seven Brew is like a similar concept, right? It's it's a it's a like a sh- like a shack, like a coffee shack. Um, uh, I think I there's one in middle. There's about. one in Middletown, directly across the street from Starbucks. Well, here's the best part: they locate right next to Starbucks. Yeah. So if you've ever been to the Middletown Starbucks, right here off Shelbyville Road, across from Target and Kroger, like that one typical is crazy. That typical, drive-through is the, the worst. The drive-through is nuts. Okay, they're they're that people line up on Shelbyville Road's shoulder to get into the drive-through line. And these people just said, "Hey, we'll be a coffee only quick drive-through. It's two lanes. It's like it looks like the Chick-fil-A drive-through, except there is a 300 square foot building." Yeah. Right? And the people literally like the the techs like or the the waiter, waitress, who, whatever you call them, I don't know. They walk <laughs> out to your car at your window, take your order, right? Just like you're in the Starbucks drive-through, there's like 10 people in like 300 square feet working. And they get people in and out of that place like yeah. clockwork. So basically, you're sitting over there in the Starbucks shoulder line, and you go, hmm, wonder how, wonder how good their coffee is. So instead of running from their competitors, they locate right next to them. I thought it was kind of kind of interesting. Yeah, that is. I mean, it's where everybody's going for their coffee anyways, so a drive through is too long. Come well, on over. Speaking of real estate, we didn't get into real estate. I can tell you this. Commercial real estate, um, it is quite often – Okay, that entities, business entities, uh, profile neighbors and locate and piggyback Fortune 500 companies in their market research. So, like, for example, if it works for Chick-fil-A, we need to be right next to it. Like, I don't need to do the market research. I just know that Chick-fil-A did it. It's very easy to figure out what Chick-fil-A looks for. Okay, it's it's quotable. It's out there. It's in the ethos if you're in real estate. Right. I know what Starbucks looks for. Okay, I know what assumptions they make. If my business can thrive under the same, you know, same environment that these businesses can thrive, and it's not always competitors; it's usually like ancillary stuff, like, right? Uh, you know, fast well, casual food, you know, things like that. We've talked about Chick Fil A and where they like to locate for on this show, and mm-hmm. it's pretty much strip malls. That's it. Now it seems like they are moving away from it a little bit. Right off highways, Elizabethtown, Kentucky is yep. an example of that. Yeah, They're of building course. the second one right off sixty five. But. Sure, it's going to crush. Oh, absolutely. I mean, absolutely. If you've ever been to the other one in that town, then you know. Oh, it is ridiculous. I mean, every Chick-fil-A in Louisville goes nuts. But that's the thing. Um, you know, basically, companies will save themselves hundreds, if not millions of, hundreds of thousands, if not millions of dollars in market research by just saying, okay, if it works for Chick-fil-A, we're good. Yeah. Okay. So, interesting. Um, let's move on to, well, no, here's another. One more McDonald's thing. They're bringing back the snack wrap. Seven years, it's been gone. They're bringing it back. Snack wrap was the best thing they had. Do you know why they did away with it? Why? Said it was too complicated to make. <laughs> a, a, a tortilla, a lettuce, yeah. and a and a chicken, chicken tender. tender. Like that seems. Do they even have chicken tenders anymore? I don't, I don't know. I remember I know. like that was something people used to get the McStrips. I think they called them. <laughs> I was like, that doesn't sound very good. The McRib. Have you ever had a McRib? Oh yeah. Well, I mean, that comes back every four months. It seems like. I never eat. I've never eaten a McRib. Never had one. Wow. I'm not interested. That is in a uh, interesting. Yeah, it's like the raw onion and the barbecue chicken or Do you barbecue not like raw beef onion patty. On anything? I'm not a raw onion guy, but like honestly, that's not it. It's like the barbecue hamburger patty. I mean, it's it's not the most appealing looking thing in the it's world, just, you know. But I eat chicken nuggets, so like if you eat chicken nuggets, you gotta yeah. But they look good. They do. All of. right. Uh, here's another headline: insane, insane stat from the Economist. Right now, it's cheaper to rent a two-bedroom dwelling than it is to buy a comparable one for 89 percent of Americans. Three years ago, the figure was 16 percent. Hold on. Say that again. So right now, it's cheaper to rent a two-bedroom dwelling than it is to buy a comparable one for 89 percent of Americans. Three years ago, the figure was 16 percent. I really would love to know some of these assumptions here. I'm going to check this out. I mean, that, so... This is Morning Brew tweeted it. They're quoting The Economist. 
they're quoting the economists, but what 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 assumptions are made here? Um, buying represents a mortgage payment on a typical home in each county, assuming a thirteen percent down payment. Weird. And a 30-year fixed-rate mortgage yeah, at the prevailing mortgage down. rate. Renting represents the lease on a typical two-bedroom property, sources, census, Department of Housing and Urban Development, Federal Housing Finance Agency, Zillow, and The Economist. Um, I'm going to sell. A lot of words. If this was a buy, sell, or hold, I'm going to sell on this. I don't believe that to be accurate. And and this goes back to a conversation I think that we had. Well, uh, let me say this. If 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 the goal here is under these same assumptions to compare 20 to 23, I'll buy. Um but th- th- there are, there's too much there's mm. it's too vague the words like prevailing and typical and blah blah. blah. What is a typical two bedroom property? That's what I need to know. And um, because because I made the same argument when I talked about the properties that I I purchased that I'm going to rent out mm-hmm. for very modest prices here coming up. But like if you're comparing purchasing that property to renting that property, it's absolutely not true. Yeah. If that is the typical property. Well, and let's talk about cheaper. If cheaper is your goal, okay, I guess renting's better. But if growing your wealth and you know, owning a home and a mortgage is forced savings. Absolutely. Whether it's more expensive or not. It's forcing you to save money building equity in your home, and you cannot do that renting even if it's cheaper. Yeah. And the matter of the fact is most Americans are not uh, disciplined enough where if they do get cheaper rent than owning a home, they'll use that those savings to invest. They're going to use yeah. it for... Uh, consumer consumer interest food yeah. clothes not not for investing entertainment which is fine if, nicer car if that's what you want to do but if your goal is to build wealth and you know build a financially successful life for yourself it's yeah. owning the home is the way to go absolutely well and i agree with that 1000% and i think that's the best point to make here but the more i look at this you're looking at average purchase prices of homes and and average rents. Okay. By definition, renting is supposed to be cheaper. What do you see more rental units at lower or higher prices? It's lower prices, mm-hmm. right? Like like the the home that gets rented is typically a lower priced property. The home that gets bought and lived in is more expensive, right? So if you're looking at the averages, it's it's always going to turn out this way. It's yeah. always going to turn out this way. I think it's 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 a bit of a it's a bit of a uh, bait and switch on this. All right, there's your real estate for the show. We'll be back <laughs> after a couple ad sponsors. This is the Jay Pitt Show, Talk Radio 1080, Real News, Real Talk. I'm your co-host Ryan Harris. See you in a sec. Welcome back to the Jay Pitt Show, Talk Radio 1080, Real News, Real Talk. I almost just got got caught staring at my computer there for a second, not realizing the the music we were, was going. We were back on. That's okay. Uh, That's okay. Happens. It does. It does. I think. I think we're pretty. For amateurs, we're pretty. There, at what point aren't we amateurs? Get paid to do it? Yeah, I think so. I think that's exactly <laughs> how it has to go. All right. So there's one more quick headline we didn't go over that I think we should have. It was a, just a funny thing I saw. It said people love trashing realtors, but imagine the crap show we'd be in if people were buying homes off zillow like it was cyber monday on amazon <laughs> oh so bad <laughs> so so bad funny. i realize there are bad realtors there's a lot of them yeah. okay and it's partially because it's easy to become a realtor i but. think that's one of my least favorite things about nar is you're not supposed to talk bad about other real estate agents oh, but uh let's be honest i'm fine i'm yeah. fine doing it yeah. i'm fine doing it i call a spade a spade yeah I think it's fair. Yeah, it's fair. Uh, for sure. All right. So we don't have to talk about this long either, but I have to. B- okay. Bitcoin running. Go for it. Uh, it is running. It's being talked about a little, but it seems like the mainstream media really hasn't been paying as much attention to it this time, which I absolutely love. Uh, <laughs> it's back. It was back above 44,000 yesterday. Kind of hovering there. Maybe down some today. 43, sure. 43.5 today. Down 14%? No. That's two years. Sorry, my bad. So what I think is one of the most interesting things about Bitcoin is Henry Ford. So Henry Ford, you know, he was way ahead of his times. He invented the, uh, uh, what do you call it? The conveyor the, belt? Yes, the conveyor belt. 
And he basically envisioned. Yeah, I mean, basically coin. mass production is yeah. widely credited. Yeah. So Model he, T automobile. I mean, he uh, basically predicted Bitcoin 100 years ago. So I'll just read these quick little paragraphs. So here it goes. Close to 100 years ago on December 4th, 1921, Henry Ford discussed an idea he conceived in the New York Tribune. The t- title of the published article was Ford would replace gold with energy currency and stop wars. Ford is well known for developing the assembly line technique and creating one of the first mass produced American built automobiles. Ford's energy currency con- concept describes a digital currency much like Satoshi's Bitcoin and one that is also scarce. Not only would Ford's energy currency be backed by energy measured in kilowatt hours, he also discussed with the Tribune that the currency would be issued only to a certain definite amount and for a specific purpose. I think there's a bit of a problem with that. All right. What is it? Well, you can create endless energy via a lot of different sources. Well, presumably sunlight. So people refer to Bitcoin as energy money. I get that. And I get there's a definite amount. I understand that, but there's not, there's not a definite amount of kilowatt hours, which is what he says here. So, so my point is, and this was at a time where probably solar and, this and, is when the dollar is still died, tied to Bitcoin. Or yeah, tied, tied to, to gold. gold. A long, a long time before it became away from the gold standard. But, but here, here's the point. I, I can imagine there is a situation where he envisioned, you know, that energy would always remain scarce. Mm-hmm. Uh, so anyway, in energy is not so scarce anymore, especially given the advent of solar. Yes. Right. So as long as the sun exists, which is required for human life. We can generate energy. May not be the most efficient energy. We certainly, you know, uh, create a lot more energy with with fossil fuels than we do with solar. As a result, it's much more efficient. But that's neither here nor there. I, I love that, I, and, and I think it still stands the point you're trying to make. This lends it one of the one of the brightest minds of you know the yeah. last several hundred years mm-hmm. envisioned a concept similar to Bitcoin. Yeah, you know, he said. Also, it's very simple when you analyze it. The cause of all wars is gold. Well, and it's this and is now it's dollars. This what he's really talking about is democratization, right? Mm-hmm. Of of currency, which right now it is not. No. Bitcoin not is all. the only well, I mean, there's a lot of crypto, but you know, Bitcoin is the the leader in democratized currency. Correct, correct. Interesting. All right. Uh next thing, here's a, a trend going around right now. Have you seen this at all Dinks? Of is it the the video like we're Dinks, of course we. Yeah, but it's like it's kind of taken this whole new level. Like everybody's making these videos now and they're going viral and people arguing in the comments, but it's all about Dinks. So what Dink stands for if you haven't seen it, dual income no kids. Yep, that's right. And it basically, to me, it seems like they're almost like trashing people with kids. Yes. And it kind of perfectly explains the population collapse, but that's yeah, neither I here nor there. I think I saw a stat somewhere. It was like 47% of households are uh, kidless now. Wow. Yeah. It's pretty insane. Hmm. But uh, there's this guy. He said, had a really good tweet or respond to this. My take on the Dink video is dual income, no kids. There's no right or wrong whether a couple chooses to have children or not. It's their personal choice. Everyone has the right to reach fulfillment however they want. The glamorization of the Dink lifestyle on social media is where it rubs me the wrong way. There are a lot of people out there who want to have kids but can't for one reason or another. My thoughts as a parent of two beautiful girls, children are the greatest wealth slash blessing in life. For uh, sure. I think you'd agree with that. Absolutely. I can now. Two, being married without kids is just perpetual dating. What do you think about that? Well, I think especially considering the fact that nearly, if not north of 50% of all marriages end in divorce, um, children are the glue that holds marriages together. It's the reason, right, that you find a way to stay in love with your spouse. And that's not to say that you can't have an, an amazingly happy life without kids. If you don't want kids, you don't want kids. That's great. That's fine. Um, you know, uh, I, I will say that it's the greatest joy that I've ever experienced mm-hmm. and, and like a purpose that I didn't know or didn't know could be possible. Yeah. But I agree. So, so there third you point of six, the dink lifestyle as it's portrayed on social media is consumption based. Don't fall into this trap. Uh, I think that's largely true. 
Well, I, you can when when you do have a, a dual income and no kids, right? Um, kids are absolutely your greatest expense. Absolutely, positively, without a doubt. Um, you do get to indulge in things that you really, really enjoy, and if that's what you what you want for your life, and if that, or, or if that's the reality of your life, um, c- you know, considering you know biology and and health concerns and issues, then go for it. Live your life the way you want to live your life. Enjoy it. It's yours. It's no one else's. It's no one. No one else's opinion matters mm-hmm. in this respect. Um, I, I disagree with either side shaming the other. Yeah. For what they choose. Like, guys, life's precious. Like, this is this is all we get, right? This is all we get is your 80 years on this planet if you are fortunate. Live it the way you want to live it. Yeah. It's right. it's kinda it's kinda weird though. I feel like <laughs> you don't see people with kids making videos about people without kids. That that is <laughs> that is interesting. Um, but you know, I mean, this this culture we live in, I don't think it's about people with kids and people without necessarily it's about people wanting attention. Yeah. And when you le- lean into social media culture, people will make videos because they know they get attention. You're right. People with kids don't make videos about people without, but they wouldn't be, they wouldn't stop short of shaming them. I can tell you this, like once you have uh three or two, you think back about the time when you had one, Ryan, this is you, yeah. right? And you're in the thick of it, right? Four months. Like yeah. it's not easy. Okay, but there will come a time in the not too distant future if you don't have more where things will normalize and get slightly easier. Yeah. It'll never be the same as having no kids. But you compare your life to that of somebody with four, it's going to be way different. <laughs> I mean, I had one for five years. Yeah. And I look back at my life when my ch- when my when my oldest was five years old and I had no other kids. And I could do anything I wanted. Yeah. Because he was self sufficient. My wife and I could trade off, and we we wanted for absolutely nothing. I can't make those choices now. Yeah, one of the right. funniest responses I've seen to these people are, "Are you making fun of your uh, parents who weren't dinks?" <laughs> yeah, exactly. <laughs> Shouldn't it be glad they didn't decide to be a dink? <laughs> uh, we can kind of skip over. Well, five is five out of six point is your bloodline values and branch of the family tree end with the dink lifestyle. Right. Uh, six. So you can achieve 99% of the dink lifestyle with kids if you make enough money. <laughs> you can, you can, but uh, that's challenging as well, man, because kids take time. They take time. If you do it right, it takes a lot of your time. So when you have less time to devote to work, it, you usually don't make more money. Yeah, yeah. So, But I will uh, say I've made much more money having kids than I ever made before. Yeah, And that's you, what most people say. It's forced efficiency. Right. It's absolutely forced efficiency. Yeah, so yeah, that's cool. So buy a home for forced savings, have yeah. kids for forced efficiency. There we go. Yep. Everything's yep. about being forced. Uh, okay, let's see here. Dude, golf ball rollback. We got to talk about that. Yes. Okay, let's talk about that. So I'm not good. I can't. I can't. Uh, I can't afford to. I have. I don't really care too much. My issue with it, I don't understand the golf ball rollback as much as why didn't they pause the technology where it is. So they had multiple options. They could have they could have done nothing and let them keep any chance at any chance they roll back the rollback. <laughs> like I mean, from my understanding is it's gotten a pretty negative PR response. Mm, I think there is a chance. I think they should for amateurs. I just don't understand. Well, here's the problem with that: you have amateurs that play in tournaments with pros. But I guess if it's I guess if it's a pro tournament, you could use the pro golf balls. That's it. And if you want to prepare for a pro tournament. Well, yeah, I get the understanding. Like, like part of the allure, at least for the good amateurs, is the thought that they could maybe compete, and that drives the game a little bit. Like, like the improvement is is what the game is all about. Yeah, and you know the whole reason behind the golf ball rollback is to save golf courses sustainability. They're saying the game's getting too long, and golf courses are having to change too much, and yeah. uh, which does make sense and some situations but it works for all golf courses right now so instead of doing a rollback just pause technology where it is i mean does it though i guess because like if you can draw i mean if you have a 315 yard par four and your average 20 handicap can drive the green that that's not the way it's supposed to be so i guess i understand that point because i am very average if not below average but I can drive the ball 315 yards under the right conditions. I shouldn't be on the green putting for eagle on a par four. 
Yeah, but it's the same for everybody. It is the same for everybody. It's the only thing. It's kind of like this. Well, it's funny. I hadn't thought about this until literally just now because, you know, I'm a baseball fan. Mm -hmm. And there's similar things that are done. Raise the seams, raise the mound, lower the mound, right? Juice the ball. Don't juice the ball. Like different bats are allowed, this and that, right? Like, um, you know, in the college game, they use dead aluminum bats, right? In the, in the pro game, the bats pretty largely untouched. But they they – make changes like it, to me everything is becoming optimized I, I was talking to somebody the other day about baseball and how you used to have one guy in the entire game that threw 100 miles an hour and now you have undrafted free agents throwing 100 plus miles an hour pitchers right they can't get a spot on a roster throwing 100 mm -hmm. miles an hour and so like so what are we going to do at some point are we going to we're going to raise the weight of the ball so that like they have to they can't throw as fast like i don't know um but I understand raising or lowering the mound or raising the seams to add more spin. Yeah. Well, I don't I know. I guess it's just like a, baseball and golf, though, is that's that's largely just a performance growth thing, right? Like techno or learning how to throw. But that's the length, too. strength. The, the length off the tee is about guys getting in the gym and like... It's not just that, though. It's, it, it's, it's the not. golf clubs and it the is. golf balls really are do go farther every year. So is that, that what they are? They they can't just pause. So you're saying they should pause just it. pause technology where it is on golf balls. Well, <laughs> okay. So if 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 the if so, I guess I understand now that it is instead of a rollback, just leave it where it is so that yes. things don't change. Yeah, leave it where it is. Don't let them get any better. Don't let it get any worse. Okay. Stay right here. So it's the ball. It's the ball. A lot of it's the ball. Yeah, is what and, I mean, golf clubs too. But but they're not rolling back golf clubs. Yeah. So I think we got to cut away. Yeah. To a couple ad sponsors. We'll be back with our last segment on the J Pitt Show, Talk Radio 1080, Real News, Real Talk. <laughs> Welcome back to the J Pitt Show, Talk Radio 1080, Real News, Real Talk. I'm your co host, Ryan Harris. All right, on the back end of the golf ball rollback, we might as well talk about John Rom announced today. It was kind of speculated, but he is going to go to live reportedly between. He's getting between four hundred and fifty and six hundred million dollars, which is more than the entire PGA Tour purse salary <laughs> for twenty twenty four. So, how can sense. you blame him? Yeah. Well, did you did you hear Scotty Scheffler's reaction to the speculation? No. Scotty says, when asked, "Are you surprised or shocked to hear about John Rom leaving for the Live Tour?" Scotty says, "No, I'm not surprised." He uh, wants to be the best golfer on tour, and he knew with me on the PGA that was never going to happen. Jay, I think he got got. <laughs> Why? Look at the at name. Oh, I know it's not the right one. I know it's not. I know it's not the right. I know. Yeah. I know. I know it's the thing. But no, that's totally something Scotty Scheffler would say. No, I way. don't think he would say that seriously. I think he's just goofy enough that he would say it. Yeah. Uh as a joke and kind of not. I think. Maybe. I, th I think it was kind For, of a joke. I don't think he actually said it. I think he did. I it's think it's not did. the PGA Tour. I know it's a it's a it's, it's a, a meme account. Yeah, it's a meme account. But I think I, I tool around on X, and I think I found a few more. So let's All just right. whatever. Maybe it could be wrong. I don't know. Let, let's just say this: if he said it, good for him. Because now, you know what? Here's a question: Is the goal to be number one in the world or make the most money? <laughs> I, well, I don't know. I don't know. But you know, I, I go back and forth on the live because you know you probably have a a better take on this than I do, but you know, I don't have the majesty that like a lot of people associate to the PGA tour. Like it was never something I aspired to. So, you know, um, so, I, I guess we could, we could, we could also talk about tiger's return here. We didn't talk about that. Yeah. Um, played pretty good. Played. Okay. Three over day, day, day one was didn't maybe seem a little like he hurt at all. Didn't, it didn't days, so like, so a lot of people thinking like, why didn't he have his ankle fused sooner? You know, yeah, I, don't um, know. I, I guess you don't want your ankle fused. That's basically maybe he's had a lot of surgeries already. And <laughs> yeah. They don't want to do another. Yeah, you got me, man. But, so he'll probably play five or six tournaments this year. I mean, three twenty five off the off the tee a few it's times. Crazy, like it's pretty with with one ankle. Like, it's it's pretty, crazy, it's pretty nuts. Change the swing completely yeah. just to make it work, and he's. Which, by the way, I'm playing your brother in Top Golf today. Nice. Right after we get done here, heading over go. to heading over to Top Golf to take on the other Harris. Going tomorrow. I'm playing golf this Saturday. I wanted to, but I'm going to Red River Gorge. Right. So. I hope it's not too cold, but we'll see. Uh, you know what? 
If it is, it is. Yeah. This is what you, this, this is, it's December golf, Ryan. What do you expect? Well, I remember last year I played golf on, or maybe it was two years ago, New Year's Eve. And it was like 60 degrees and sunny. It was magical. Oh, magical. But uh, maybe it'll happen again. Who knows? Uh, yeah, the whole live thing. I am still indifferent. I don't mind live. I hate their format. I hate that there's no Q school for it. I hate that it's shotgun start. It yeah. needs to be 72 holes, normal tee times. There needs. I don't even care if there's shotgun's a cut, terrible. to be honest. Shotgun's terrible. The problem with shotgun starts, you can only have 48 players on the course at once the way they do it. I know. And why? The, there's, I don't understand the benefit. It makes just, no they just sense. want to be different. It, why, they're already playing less tournaments. Like, who cares if they're there for four days instead of three and they could have a tee time throughout the day? And they're getting paid way more money. Let's do regular golf and don't do shotgun <laughs> start. It's ridiculous. I hate it. And I've said it from the beginning. The biggest branding mistake i think they made from the beginning was tying live for 54 holes of golf to the name of of the tour to how many holes they play what if they want to switch to 72 yeah Are, it's still they called can't. live and maybe it's just like oh it started as a 54 hole tour and, and I, that'll tell you something. i didn't even realize that i now i get it now the roman numerals but like i didn't understand that that's what live was stood for yeah i mean um, i knew they played 54 holes i just did not make that connection yeah rose me the wrong way but uh i think we got to get into our next topic yeah, so we yeah, have yeah, enough yeah. time we got to have time here so we've been doing these drafts we've taken the last few weeks off we're gonna do the best potato draft <laughs> today it has nothing to do with louisville <laughs> like mr so okay. like mr potato head yes i actually had that on my list <laughs> as a funny one so did uh, you really no you didn't I did. Did I totally just ruin your joke? Oh, that's so hilarious. Uh, that's okay. That's all right. All right. I, I can't look, though, because I don't want to, uh, you know. Let's do rock, paper, scissors once to see who goes first. We did this last time. All right. Uh, I got it. All right. First. This, we Are we going to do three or five? Let's do three. I feel like five is getting a little aggressive. Okay. If we, we, can, we can do honorable mentions at the end if we, if, if we go past three. Right. Okay. Snake draft? Uh, yeah. So I get the second. I get number two and three. Yes. Yep. Okay. Let's do it that way. All right, my number one, I'm going with Tater Tots. Tater Tots. That's a good one. That's a good one. I, If given the option between like fries or tots, I always take tots. So I'm with you there. That's my thing. I think I still think like going to Drake's, you're not getting fries. No, like you're getting Tater Tots. No, going to Rooster's. You're getting well. Tots. Actually, they have curly fries, so I'm getting but, curly fries. Nah, see, well, do we be giving away your further, your, your further down the list there? Yeah, uh, his affinity. You, you know that, and I'm not going to say this because it's like you know, to, I feel like it's too obscure. But like tornado fries at a uh, blind squirrel, unbelievable. unbelievable. I don't even know what those are. So it's like a curly fry, but it's thicker, okay. and it's like only about so. so. Anyway, but that's good. Uh, I'm going to go. With the second pick, my first first pick, second pick of the draft, all gratin potatoes. Got to be up there. What potatoes? All gratin potatoes. <laughs> oh, my gosh. I mean, I'm sure I've had them. Right. Wow, that was out of left field. No, it is not. It's like what cheese. It's like cheesy potato casserole. Okay. Okay? It's like cheesy potato casserole. Okay. Which I am going to stay with that trend with my third pick of the draft, my second, third overall. Hash brown casserole, okay. hash brown casserole, and and I'm just telling you, if you, look, the only reason to go to Ruth's Chris Steakhouse, in my opinion, is the au gratin potatoes. That's funny. Um, steak's pretty decent, but yeah, we were talking. I about wouldn't go there steak, just for it. Steak restaurants in the office the other day. I'm not sure we could say some of the things we oh. said in there about oh, no. different ones, but yeah. uh, all I got to say is, Luke Andrews, you have a terrible taste in steak restaurants. <laughs> We're not going I there. I think you would agree with We're me not too, going there. I did, what he was saying. Well, I enjoyed the place that was his number one that did not make our draft Heck of restaurants. No. I did um, not enjoy it. I, I enjoyed it. I had a decent experience. I did not put it up there with with Ruby's or Repeal, which were number one and two in our restaurant draft. Everybody's going to know what I'm talking about when I say this. I also lost money betting on horses there, <laughs> so I didn't just spend a lot of money on a on a meal, but... Uh, also spent I can't money believe, on horse, horses. I can't believe you don't know what a grot potatoes are. Uh, show me a picture. I've probably Dude, had it. I, uh, you, you, you probably have. Okay. Right. So tater tots, 
All right, that's a that's a very my next one. I'm gonna go with mashed potatoes. Mashed potatoes. That's a good one. Solid. Um, it's solid. Like it's on my list. It's on my list. Um, there's a theme with mine. So yeah, it's just do, a bunch do of you, other do stuff. Do you go two them. now or no? <laughs> uh, no, you got it. Okay, so I have my third, and then I think you get some your people third. do it that way. But okay, I, I, don't I think when you're only doing three, it gets a little funny. Yeah. All right. So so nice nice rounding out the trend. I'm gonna go. And I'm gonna combine these two because I feel like they're thing. If they're two separate things, then then you tell me and I'll pick one of them. But like a twice baked or a stuffed baked potato. I feel like they're the same thing. I think you don't do twice baked unless it's stuffed. I had twice baked. So I'm gonna go twice baked. Um I was gonna pick that next. So yeah, so Good stolen. Pick. All right. So all the trend was cheese with my potatoes. Yep. Huh. This is difficult for me right here. I, I could believe. go basic. Actually, both the ones I'm thinking of are basic, but I think they're basic because they're eaten a lot. And I'm which means they're popular, probably. With fries, just <laughs> <laughs> French fries. As I take down, uh, take down all the thing. that for that. All that you can't even give me like a specific kind of French fry. No, like I fries. had like honorable mention for me was waffle fries because yeah. I'm a big fan of waffle fries. Chick-fil-A has helped me with that. But like waffle yeah. fries have always been a, a, a favorite of mine. Yeah. I also had hash brown patties. Yeah, it's like not like loose hash browns those necessarily, like but ones, like a, the oval ones. Yeah. Like the McDonald's, the like the McDonald's. Hash they browns. always used to have them at high school. So, and, yes, they do. Yeah. I tell you what I do now. I'll go to Kroger and I'll buy it like frozen in a bag and then I'll add them to my breakfast sandwiches. Yeah. There's nothing Good. better than a hash brown on a breakfast. Oh, sandwich. No, not at all. all right. Where are we at on time? Uh, time we, we got, got like a minute. We got like a minute. So okay. I was going to do. So yeah, on my list also, I had potato chips chips are good um, and mr potato head have you ever sorry i ruined it hey have you ever seen the the uh potato chip uh mashed potato dish yes it's like a apparently they say like casserole isn't it no you just no. make straight up mashed potatoes out of chips take a bag of chips in oh, a bowl yes, i have seen milk that. and and butter yeah and you let it sim you let it sit and simmer and you stir it up and it's mashed potatoes and apparently it's really good because it's sure already it's got really the, good because it's already got the salt in it <laughs> you know much sodium that has? oh well you know you can buy the low sodium chips which as you know the world's learning sodium's not the worst thing in the world for you not if you work out and sweat throughout uh, the day you actually need sodium unless you have congestive heart failure but you know that's neither here nor there Okay. Um, <laughs> <laughs> then you definitely don't need a lot of sodium. All right. So parting shots for today. Uh, I don't feel good about this draft for me. For so you, I mean, that's my final words. We'll see what social media thinks. I feel I feel pretty good about my results here, especially considering you didn't know what hot grout and potatoes are. All right. That's all the time we got. We'll be back with another draft soon. We've got some things in the works, some things we've been considering. I think it'll be fun. Uh, but yeah, not a lot of real estate today, a lot of current events, but uh, hope you, hopefully you enjoyed it. This is Jay Pitts. I am here with Ryan Harris with the Jay Pitts Show on Talk Radio 1080, and we will see you soon.